Namaskaram. Welcome to today's special darshan on the occasion of Sadhguru's Enlightenment Day. It has been a scintillating saga of 38 years since that momentous afternoon on Chamundi Hills in Mysore that changed the course of Sadhguru's life. Adi Guru
Next is a dance performance by Isha Samskriti alumni set to the song I He Savre, in which the devotee beseeches nature to take on its most beautiful colours and welcome Sadhguru.
The next performance will be a Hindustani and Carnatic Jugal Bandi by Mahesh Kale and Sandeep Narayan with Sounds of Isha. Sagama pada 
The next performance begins with a quatrain of the Shiva Tandava Stotram and depicts Sadhguru's journey of three lifetimes. The spiritual fire that was lit on the consecration of Dhyanalinga has become a wildfire that has ignited millions of hearts around the world. Jata Bhujanga Pingala Jata Bhujanga Pingala Spurat Panamani Prabha Spurat Panamani Prabha Kadamba Kumkumadrava Pralipta Digvadhu Mukhe Pralipta Digvadhu Mukhe Madanda Sindhuras Purat Tvaguttariya me dure Madandha sindhura spura Tvaguttariya me dure Mano vinodam adbhutam Vibhatu Bhartari Mano Vinoda Adbutam Vibartu Bhuta Bhartari
शिव स्नेह न तो शिव प्रेम नोयम दयावा न करुणाक न वार्थय तम शिव तव सुखा शिव तो संपूर्ण परिपूर्णता शिव न ही शिव स्नेह न तो शिव प्रेम नोयम दयावा न करुणाक न वार्थय तम शिव तव सुखा शिव तो संपूर्ण परिपूर्णता शिव न ही शिव स्नेह न तो शिव प्रेम नोयम दयावा न करुणाक न वार्थय तम शिव तव सुखा शिव तो संपूर्ण जय 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 महादेव जय 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 महादेव शिव शंकर आदि अनंत शिव शंकर आदि अनंत जय 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 महादेव जय 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 महादेव नमस्कार Thirty-eight years feels like a few days in my experience. Much has been done. 
by people all over, variety of things. One is the volume of activity, another is the nature of activity, and the most important is about how it is done. Why? <laughs> Why so much activity? Everybody asks me. I just want to exhaust you. I exhaust you in such a way that activity becomes like breath, not exerting, doesn't take any kind of effort, just what's needed, we just do. If you don't come to this, you will not know how to be. If you were in a state where you could reject, reject activity and simply be, <laughs> Believe me, ninety-nine percent of the people on the planet cannot simply be for ten minutes. So, though to be looks like a romantic aspiration, being is <laughs> being talked about everywhere. But the important thing is to raise one's physical and mental activity to a place where it can be just done without being entangled in it in any way, that it doesn't take a toll on you. Well, all the many things that people have done, all of you have done, variety, immense variety of activity. From a single group of people or a single organization, I don't think I'm wrong if I say, there is no parallel in a long time that people have done such variety of activity with the success and the skill at which it has been done. I think there's no parallel. So congratulations to all of you. And uh, also, my gratitude to all of you, being who you are. You have not come without your troubles <laughs> but you have come with your possibilities, which is what matters. I'm saying gratitude because many, many, many of you have done a lot for so many other people around you. Have you done enough for yourself? Definitely many of you have. Many of you are a question mark. Many of you putting commas and going, etc., etc.
In many ways, time has come that we should start making people cross their logical limits. When I say logical limits, <laughs> you must understand the great fantastic logic of yours, which I normally refer to as stupid logic, doesn't exist anywhere in the universe. In the immensity of creation, there is no logic. It's only a little bit of intelligence that was dropped into your bone box, which eulogizes logic. So if your psychological drama is of cosmic nature <laughs> then of course logic is a fantastic thing. But if the nature of the cosmos has touched you, your logic is a silly little stupid thing. It's up to you which side of the border you want to live. Because you've been around me, I assume that you want to be on the other side. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, what's the point of me? You could have chosen a superhero. Hmm? They also do illogical things. They also wear even their underwears wrong. <laughs> you know, they also do illogical things these days. But they're generally logical, they're good, they're nice, they'll do this, they'll do that. Well, I'm not trying to destroy the value of human intellect. It's just that uh, if you are in your home and you have a small window in your bedroom and you looked out, and it showed you this immense, you know, we are at the Michigan Lake, north of Chicago. It showed you this fantastic water body. Then you got inspired and you tried to go through the window. If you do, you will not be in one piece. <laughs> you won't be able to swim in the Great Lake. <laughs> it is just that if you see something through your window, you must have intelligence to turn away from the window, find a door and get out of that place. That's all I'm saying. But... <laughs> the simple arrogance of human existence will make human intellect so grand within oneself, very difficult to turn away from the window. No, I'm not talking about uh, Microsoft, I'm talking about window, window, my window. <laughs> and it gets so big, Well, I think if we, you have turned away from the window and you're on the phone, I think, these days. That is your window right now, it's gotten much smaller, I'm saying. Don't try to go through it anywhere. It gives you a false sense of getting across the world. Well, this keeps you preoccupied, but you think you're busy. Yes. I'm saying this very consciously. People think they are busy, but they're only preoccupied. To take this object from here and place it here, you will see people will go through all this because there are many of intellect going on. 
stupid intellect, which is not a solution, which is only creating complexities. If intelligence works, most complex things should become simple. Simple things, you're making them complex. Don't you ever call that intelligence, but unfortunately that's what is happening in the world. People make very simple things complex. Tell me, to be born, very simple, you didn't have to do anything, somebody did something and here you are. To grow up, you just have to eat and pay attention, you'll grow up. And to die one day, you don't have to do anything, somebody takes care of that also. You're in Chicago <laughs> It's a simple process. But because you think you're intelligent, it has become so complex. Because you're in this mode of creating a problem and finding a solution, creating a problem and finding a solution, and you think you're doing something fantastic. Well, you're doing a bit of circus, and this circus is causing enormous pain on the planet, both to yourself and to everybody. You may call it war, you may call it strife, you may call it a fight, you may call it a domestic situation, but enormous pain at various levels, simply to exist. <laughs> I just wrote a poem for you today. Sadhguru, don't read all your poetry, we don't understand, tell us clearly. What is it? It's like this. It's called be or busy. Listen to this carefully because of very few words. Be or busy. My deepest song has not been sung yet. Still in wait for din to settle and silence to blossom. When I sing that song, Will you be or busy? I'll read it once again for you. Be or busy? My deepest song has not been sung yet. Still in wait for din to settle and silent, silence to blossom. When I sing that song, will you be or busy? Well, you know, I'm wearing this as a flag to remind me how old I am, otherwise I just forget, you know. I'm on the motorcycle and I still feel like I'm twenty-two, not even twenty-five, because that's when I did the maximum riding. <laughs> so, this has to wave in my face to say, looking at the color, you know, okay. So, because this keeps reminding me, in the next few years we have to prepare to uh, get people to be. Otherwise, <laughs> instead of being a, a, a powerhouse of transformation, I may just end up with a large fan club. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm watching this technology platform, uh, you know, when 
we are on Facebook Live or Instagram Live, whatever, I see lots of love signs and uh, thumbs ups and uh, all coming. I just look at this and oh my god, this is becoming a fan club <laughs> No, 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 you don't... that's how you express yourself, it's fine with me. But... Transformation happens because we are willing to drop the form that we have taken right now. If I don't set this form, where is transformation? No such thing happens. But... If I don't give you any activity, you will go crazy sitting in one place. If I give you activity, you get tangled up and get busy. Now you have to learn to be activity simply, effortlessly doing it. This has to come into your life. One cannot do this if they're too concerned about what they will get out of this activity. If your activity is your currency in your life, to get what you want, then it'll not work that way. A, transac a transactional life and a transformative life are two different things. On this day, uh, I would like to remind you, one fundamental thing that happened to me on that day was, what was transactional became totally transformative. This is because the transaction lost its significance, that's all. If transactions are significant, how will transformation happen? Because transactions will grow from one to another and to another, it keeps you busy. So it's your choice either to be or busy. In this direction, we will be doing many things. I'm explaining this to you because many of you will think I have suddenly become prejudiced <laughs> I'm not becoming prejudiced. I'm... It's like, uh, you know, I was at the... ISRO, Indian Space Research uh, Station, when they launched this uh, satellites going up and one was to go to the moon. So I was sitting with the director and talking to him and trying to understand because rocket science, I am not a scientist. So uh, they are such wonderful and simple people, absolutely fantastic people to be with. And they were explaining to me, very patiently for the ignorant me, telling me how from what is shooting off here, which is uh, hundreds of tons, by the time it gets there, it gets to forty-eight kilograms. This is hundreds of tons, what is sitting here, a massive rocket, but it becomes so small out there. So some things have to be shed if you have to get to certain places. But we don't have to shed that much, but some fat has to be shed for certain aspects of life. It's not that other aspects will not be on, everything that's been on till now will be on. But there'll be some things that can be done only if things are lean. So in that process, we are taking various steps. One very outwardly step, other steps people may not see or recognize. One very outwardly step is the Sadhguru exclusive. Oh Sadhguru, you said you're always inclusive and we thought you are very inclusive. Now why are you becoming exclusi exclusive? Have you stopped being a yogi? Because <laughs> yoga means union. Inclusion. But you saw that most yogis were exclusive. 
even reclusive. Well, I have not been that even though such urges are there in me also <laughs> Because we thought it's very important to be inclusive at a time like this in the world, when our ability to communicate with the world is limitless, if we want to create some kind of a global transformation, being inclusive is very important. At the same time, when we start talking to the world, we talk, talk a certain language, a certain social, political, other sensitivities, which can restrict various possibilities. So because of that, second stage of rocket, you know, drop some. Lots of those debris are in the oceans. Rockets keep dro dropping first stage and become second stage. So some things have to be shed. And that choice of whether you want to be shed or you want to be on the second stage, we will leave it to you. That's why the Sadhguru exclusive so that we can communicate. Initially, they are just loading some exclusive videos and stuff. But I have other plans which I have not spoken to them, I still need to explore the technology as to how much can be done on this exclusive platform. But we will definitely explore various other aspects, when, how, we will time it according to the trajectory of what happens. So, uh, I think uh, they have an introductory video on Sadhguru exclusive, I think they should play that now. Oh, it's already over, I'm so sorry. Anyway, it's uh, wonderful to be here with all of you online. Thanks to the virus, we can't assemble in one place. Here, the just uh, we did not inform anybody because any large assembly is unlawful right now. All those people who are arguing, man is a social being. I think they're having little trouble with this virus loss. Well, you can be by yourself. So, uh, we've been on this trip from Tennessee, it's... Uh, this is only the fifth day. I think we are just north of Chicago. After all those... Uh, forays into Trail of Tears and everything, I think... I think my meter is reading somewhere over twenty-five hundred miles, totally. <laughs> so we've been riding. There are many dimensions to life. Different people have explored it differently. If you look at the spiritual process in India, it is so sophisticated and complex, and the variety from the simplest to the most complex, every kind. And over a period of time, not able to maintain distinctions between one thing and the other, it has become one hodgepodge gudju. You know what's a gudju? South Indian people know what's gudju. Too many ingredients mixed in one to make it insanely tasty. But it's too mixed up, you can't identify anything. 
in South Indian meals, if you churn something, certain type of foods I'm saying, if there is a vegetable, people will ask, eating it, after eating it, they'll ask, what is this? Because you can't recognize it. That is the skill of the cook, that you should not be able to recognize any of the original qualities of the ingredients. <laughs> so, it, Indian culture with an enormous spread of spiritual processes has become a guju over a period of time because there is no distinction between this and that. Everybody is quoting everything from anywhere to anywhere. So because of this, it has a rich, colorful culture, but spiritual process, you can only... <laughs> you can only walk in one direction, you can't do this, this, this. You will see, wherever there are Indian people, if I sit down, they'll ask me one question, if I say something hard-hitting, then they'll say, no, Sadhguru, but Ramana Maharishi said like that. Because that also a little bit. Do they know everything that Ramana Maharishi said? No. They know two sentences. But Krishna said like this, they'll go back six thousand years. Like this, they will fly all over the place because there is a spiritual culture, an enormous culture. But spiritual path needs to be singular, that somebody picks up something and walks that. So, you think you can just live in that spiritual atmosphere, which is fantastic, but unless you take steps, you don't grow. You may enjoy the ambience, but you will not... See, right now we are enjoying the ambience, but we are not yet drinking the water, just like that. A massive spiritual culture, you enjoy the ambience, but you never got to drink the water. So, a little bit of exclusivity between one thing and the other thing has to happen, otherwise there will be just goju, it tastes very good. <laughs> See, being on this uh, motorcycle ride, well, we cannot go into any hotel rooms, we can't go to any restaurants, we are not meeting any people because keeping the team safe, from the virus. And of the seventeen, eighteen people, we broke them into three groups and they are keeping their distance from each other as groups. In case somebody gets infected, we just have to isolate one group and still continue the journey. And uh, <laughs> me, of course, exclusive group. So, living on the road and going on like this, why? Because here, in this country, in this land, there has been a certain form of spirituality, occult and mysticism, which is completely unsophisticated, which is simple, earthy, but wonderful in its own way. This could happen to you if you just sit here, Suppose you're not a busy person, you know, I mean, you're not busy. You simply sat here for days on end, months on end, simply looking at this water. Well, initially, uh, your domestic troubles will trouble you, your food, your survival, but you're living in an open space where you're not in touch with the rest of the world, you don't have any big ambitions, you're world is small and there you are and here you're gazing. You're not looking for any spiritual process, simply you're gazing at the terrain, maybe an open space, maybe a desert, maybe a, an expanse of water, simply staring. Well, things will happen to you. Not because something will rise out of the... well, if you are... Uh, if you are that kind, monsters will rise from the water, that's a different... Thing. That's a... you're a bad filmmaker. If you don't do anything, simply staring, things will happen to you. Not because of the water, not because of the land, 
not because of anything around you, simply because human attention can do that. If you simply pay attention without purpose, things will open up. Right now, your attention is a transactional tool. If I pay attention, what do I get? Right now, people <laughs> people are proudly talking about attention deficiency like a qualification. Their attention span is only twenty seconds, I believe. They can only watch a commercial. What else can they watch? I think uh, we've been successful in enhancing people's attention span. We've been making people sit for hours on end. Listening intensely, and after two, three hours of listening, in the end they don't know what they heard, but still, they were sitting there attentively, that's good. That's very good because it's the tension. It is not about what, it is just the attention. So here, spiritual process happened simply by paying attention to an enormous space. It's a massive amount of land or water, whatever, everything is massive. People just paid attention, not even consciously, simply things happen within them and a whole culture evolved around that. Because they were oral culture and uh, the culture got rather quickly wiped out, they did not leave enough footprint. Nobody wrote about it, nobody really enshrined it in any way, so it's only blowing in the wind <laughs> So we're riding, trying to catch that wind. Let's see what we come out of it with. But I think uh, there are technology limitations. I think there are questions, please. Question is from Shashank. Sadhguru, you have always mentioned about living life on the edge. You have also said that if we die in, in an accident or so, we risk becoming a disembodied being expending karma for many, many years. <coughs> Sadhguru, now from the point of liberation, isn't it better to live safe until the age of 84 than to be constantly living <laughs> on the edge? <laughs> oh, oh. It once happened, Shankar and Pillai met his friend here. And his friend was in great distress. Shankar and Pillai asked, what's the problem? The friend said, you know what, I was driving to the office today, my new car, I crashed it, total, totaled it. Shankaran Pillai said, it could have been worse. Then I spent the day at the office, I took a taxi home. When I came home, can you believe it, my house was totally burned down. Shankaran Pillai said, it could have been worse. Then I was concerned where my wife is, what happened to her? Then I came to know, she's cleaned up my bank accounts and she's vanished. Shankaran Pillai said, it could have been worse. The friend asked, what do you mean it could have been worse? What do you mean by that? Shankaran Pillai said, it could have been me. That would be worse <laughs> So you are like that, Mr. Sashank, wherever you are. Well, edge means the limit in some way. 
If you want to walk on the edge, uh, you must be very conscious, very balanced. If you are not conscious and balanced, let's take you to a, a peak which has a ten thousand feet drop. If you are not very steady on your feet and in your head also, you will not go to the edge, forget about it. Forget about you falling down, you are not going anywhere near the edge. Nobody can get you there unless somebody picks you up. So, you can only live on the edge if you work upon yourself, your body, your mind, your emotions, your everything, your energies, everything. If you work upon it, then you can live on the edge. <laughs> Otherwise, how can you live on the edge? Those people who live on the edge, like uh, <laughs> you know, somebody that I know, he suddenly at the age of fifty-four or fifty-five, he took to motorcycling and he went across Central Asia riding. And I asked, what happened to you? He said, uh, you know, a close friend of mine who was healthy and well, he fell in the bathroom and died. When I saw this, suddenly I realized, what am I doing? I may fall in the bathroom and die, at least let me die in Central Asia. So I'm saying you're not going to die because you live on the edge, you're anyway going to die. More people who never went to any edge in their life, more of they, those die than those who went to the edge, because those who go to the edge are competent. When I say living on the edge, I'm talking about a being a competent life on all levels of life. If you're not competent, then everything is dangerous. Going to the bathroom is dangerous, people die in bathrooms. So, is it not safe, is it not better to live safe and be eighty-four? But you may you may become eighty-four without living at all, that is also possible. So do I have to do something dangerous to be alive? No, it seems dangerous only because you're incompetent. Somebody who's a good swimmer will start off. It looks very dangerous for somebody who does not know how to swim. Somebody who does not know how to ride a bicycle, Somebody comes balancing on these thin wheels, it looks very dangerous. Terrifying it is actually. So, not being on the edge is not because you're safe, simply because of incompetence. And living on the edge need not necessarily mean something physically dangerous. Living on the edge could be psychological, could be emotional, could be energy-wise, could be physical also. So, being on the edge is not an external situation. Being at the edge is an inner situation. If you know... See, I'm asking you, right now uh, we're a little this side of the lake but uh, in a way, we are at the edge of this country. If we want to go to the next country, we have to at least come to the border first, isn't it? How do you go to another place if you don't come to the borders of the existing place? If you don't come to the edge, how do you cross? How do you ever cross? If you stay on the edge, stay on the edge, stay on the edge, somewhere you may find a gap or somewhere you may find a bridge to cross over. If you're not on the edge, how do you go to the next dimension? Where is the possibility? In the very nature of things, it's not possible. So you want to become eighty-four? I think you already are. <laughs> yes, whatever your birthday may be, you're already are eighty-four and over. That means your cycle is already over without living. Yes, see, in schools in India, 
It was earlier like this in some schools, probably in private schools. If a child... Let's say you're in third standard, you fail three times. That means three years. Were you one of them? No. If you fail three times, fourth year they will anyway promote you, because you're just too big. <laughs> you may not be fit for the fourth standard, but you're just looking too odd in the third standard just for ambience, they moved you. You can also move like this in life. I'm not saying it's wrong, uh, but why like that, I'm asking? Why handle life like this? So, you're eighty-four, so you became... you lived a totally unconscious life, you became eighty-four, you became released from one cycle of something. So next time you'll come around and become another eighty-four, and become little more free, little more free, you want to go like this because if you've lived totally unconsciously, totally without any sense of life. I'm saying without any sense of life because you think not going to the edge is safe. No, you can die here. You can die right here without taking any risk. Most human beings who die on this planet have not taken any risk in their lives, but they die. Because that's the nature of life. It's not their fault. <laughs> that is the way life is, anyway we die. Either we can break through limitations and then die, or we can just die. What is the problem? There's no problem. The problem is just that life didn't happen to you, that's the only problem. Because the moment safety is your only concern, you are ensuring that you will be protected from life itself. If you build a proper cocoon around yourself, a box around yourself, which is absolutely safe, life doesn't happen to you. Usually that box, we call it a coffin here. I'm saying even when you're dead, you should not go into coffin, you must go straight into the earth or into the fire. One of the five elements you must go. Fire, water, earth, something you must go into, or we have, these days people are thinking of going into the space okay with me. It's unlimited space, I believe, so what's the problem? So, s the moment you think of the prime dimension of your life is security, you will ensure that you will not live. Because security does not exist anywhere except in your mind. Or rather, let me put it this way, insecurity does not exist anywhere except in your mind. I think uh, you did not listen, Shashank, you did not listen to me. I will read this poem for you once again. Be or busy. My deepest song has not been sung yet. Still, in wait for din to settle and silent silence to blossom. When I sing that song, will you be or busy? Namaskaram. Jaya 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 Mahadeva Jaya 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 Mahadeva Shiva Shankar Adi Anant Shiva Shankar Adi Anant Jaya 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 This is a song to show how thankful I am Not enough but what I can You are my perfect mirror You show me what I'm not In the endless pit of what once was me Layer and layer Joy it brings, so thank you for sharing. 
showing me what I'm not, but showing me what I could be. Thank you endlessly. Setting those tears at home.